Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be painting Festus Leechlord, one of the old fine cast kits. And by old I mean it's like maybe around 10 years old now-ish? Maybe, I don't know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7 or so years? I remember he's from old Warhammer Fantasy, updated. Now, continuing with fine cast, you're going to have to be very careful with this because there are many of these little mini uh, sprues or flashes that are all hidden throughout for the fine cast molding. So you're going to have to go through this like six or seven times each piece and look at every 45 degree angle and see if there is some flash there that you're going to have to trim, as well as sand. Now this model is very, very detailed. There is a lot here. I'm, I do like these fine cast models because there's a lot packed into them. They've definitely improved from when they first came out. But one of the things I'm going to note about the Festus Leech Lord kit is there is no assembly instructions. Uh, most of it is easy to figure out, but I'm going to have to wing it a little bit later. Now, I've assembled it up to the point of that it would get in the way of painting, however, I mean, like, everything would get in the way. <laughs> so pretty much I don't assemble anything at all. And now with general purpose primer, gray car primer, I'm going to prime the models. And while that is drying, I'm going to take liquid Tex modeling putty, I'm going to place it all over the base, and I'm just going to flatten it around, rapidly dry it with a hair dryer, press it around, and then once the model is fully dried, I'm going to press in the feet to make an indent in there. Now when starting the models, I like to paint the largest part of its body that has the similar color. So starting with his flesh, I'm going to use Xandri Dust, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Gulliman Flesh, Magos Purple, Plague Bearer Flesh, and spoiler alert, Vestigor Flesh and Fugan Orange, I will not use it immediately. I'll come back to these colors later. And I'm going to start off with a layer of Xandri Dust all over his body. Now with some watered down Skeleton Horde Contrast, I'm going to apply it all over the model to get into the recesses. And once that has dried, I'm going to go back to Xandri Dust and I'm going to dry brush all over the model to pick out all the details and highlights because there is a lot. Once that is done, I'm going to take some more watered down Skeleton Horde Contrast and I'm going to paint into a lot of the recesses, his big chin, uh, a wide areas around uh, his wounds, the folds of his skin, where his flesh meets one another or folds over. I'm going to apply this to add like a layer of browning. We're not going to do like fine lines, we're going to do like a general wide area around. And now with Gulliman Flesh, we're going to do more refined lines into the edges where the Skeleton Horde contrast is. The deepest, darkest recesses, basically. And now with Magos Purple, we're going to apply this where there could be bruising or like discoloration. Uh, this is where you're going to have fun with it and just be a little artsy. I'm going to apply it on his chin. The Magos Purple is going to make it look like there's bruises, purpling, stuff like that. And then with Plague Bearer's Flesh, I'm going to apply two layers of it to these, like, 
giant spots of growths or rashes to keep in line with my overall Rockbringer uh, uh, painting scheme. And now with Eschen Grey, Nolan Oil, and Dawnstone, we're going to move on to his uh, apron. Now I want his apron to be a contrast to the rest of his body to better outline it, so we want to go dark. So starting with a layer of Eschen Grey all over his apron. And once that is done, we're going to apply a layer of Nuln Oil all over. And once that is done, we're going to start drawing straight lines of Eschen Grey all throughout him. Up and down towards the main areas, uh, along the crosses, the highlighted areas. We're basically going to make our own texture here. And then with a one-to-one -one mix of Eschen Grey and Dawnstone, we're going to apply this to all the edges of the apron, up and down. We're going to paint straight lines all throughout. We're going to create our texture. Uh, we're going to paint all the folds and reset, if, like folds of the apron. We're basically going to paint 90 to 95 percent of the entire thing. This. And then with pure Dawnstone, we're again going to highlight the most raised areas and edges. We're going to paint like around half of what we just painted before with the Eschen Grey and Dawnstone mix. And I'm going to paint thinner lines within the mixed uh, color. And now with Best Sigour Flesh and Fugan Orange we're going to paint these giant like open flesh spots on his stomach. Now with Best Sigour Flesh we're going to use this as our base layer. And once that has dried, we're going to apply a relatively thin layer of Fugan Orange onto it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick out the uneven highlights. Or like, it's like bumps, or like, I don't know how to describe it, but like there's bumps there. And we're going to highlight those and bring them out. And now with Death World Forest and Xandri Dust, we're going to try to highlight some stuff. So first with Death World Forest, we're going to apply it onto where we applied the Plague Bearer's Flesh. We're going to apply uh, just a drop or a dot on each of these like warts on him, but it's not good enough and I'll come back to this at a later time. And then with Xandri Dust, I want to like draw straight lines all throughout the skin and other areas and highlights in certain areas because he doesn't pop. Like with all these uh, washes and stuff, it kind of dulls the overall color and effect. So applying again pure as Andrew does is going to make the model pop more. Now with Steel Legion Drab and Bane Blade Brown, and as well as Golem and Flesh, I don't have it pictured here, we're gonna paint he has like this spine coming out of him. So we can start off with a base layer of Steel Legion Drab. And then once that has dried, we're gonna apply some Gullum and Flesh to add like some depth and dark into there as well as like looks bruised. And then once that's done, we will apply like drops, like just on the very tip of these spinal pieces, Bane Blade Brown, to make them pop. And now with Dawnstone and Nuln Oil, we're going to paint these flasks that are spread out around his belt. We're going to start off with a layer of Dawnstone. And once that dries, we're going to take Nuln Oil and apply it all over these flasks. A light layer, we don't want to drown it. And then once that dries, we're going to highlight the upper raised areas with Dawnstone once again. Now with Mornfang Brown and XV88, we're now going to paint that little rope that's around him tying all the stuff together. This is also what's holding up his flasks. So we're going to start off with a base layer of Mornfang Brown, and then we will apply tap 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 dots 
of XV88 because there's individual like rope strands, so this will help pick it out. Uh, I'm doing this model with a mix of very simple uh, color schemes and some complex ones, so the simple ones don't override the main stuff and I don't have to work too hard on trying to make the model look good already. I just have to have like some parts of it look really good and some other parts just not look bad. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh and Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're going to paint all these little maggots that are all throughout him. Now I'm only going to show the ones that I paint on his body because they're spread out throughout every almost every single other piece and so we will do those at a later time. But for right now, We'll start off with a base layer of Pallid Witch Flesh, and once that dries, we will apply a layer of watered-down Skeleton Horde Contrast on each of these maggots. And then once that dries, we'll draw a straight line along the spine of each of the maggots. Okay, now with Pallid Witch Flesh and White Scar White, we're going to do the undercoating for his backpack and the Nerd Ring. We start off with a layer of Pallid Witch Flesh all over. And once that has dried, we're going to dry brush a white scar white all over to pick out all the details, because there is a lot, especially the way this model is made. Now with Agrax Earthshade and Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're going to paint all the wood. We're going to start off with a base layer of Agrax Earthshade on every wood piece, which is the backpack, his staff, and the little platform the Nurgling is on. We're going to do two coats. Once that is done, we're going to end up doing two coats of watered down skeleton horde contrast all throughout to give them a nice yellow color or yellowing. And now with Dawnstone, Evil Sun Scarlet, Agrax Earthshade, and Pallid Witch Flesh, we're going to paint those giant uh, leeches, which he is known for, Festus Leech Lord. Now, there's, we're going to have two different colored ones, a gray one and a reddish one. So we're going to have Dawnstone on the gray and Evil Sun Scarlet on the red ones. And then once both of those are dried, we're going to apply a simple layer of Agrax Earthshade all over. And then once that's done, we will go back and dry brush the appropriate color, Dawnstone or Evil Sun Scarlet, on the appropriate leech. And once that is done, we will mix a uh, maybe one-to-one-ish mix of Pallid Witch Flesh in to each of these colors, and we will dry brush the lighter colors on its bit on their big open backs. And that way, we'll have some nice, shiny leeches. And now with Doom Bull Brown and Nuln Oil, we're going to paint the bottom of his backpack thing, which I assume could be like a leather sack thing for holding all the juices in there. We'll start off with a layer of Doombull Brown. And once that has dried, we will apply Nuln Oil all over. And then once that dries again, we will apply Doombull Brown onto uh, all the highlights and stuff. Basically, 90 to 95% of it will be re-highlighted Doombull Brown. I wanted a reddish kind of leather because I kind of figured that'd be more fitting for him because of all the blood and stuff I and mean, we could eventually caked and change the color of the leather so we 
Alright then, moving on. With Gullum and Flesh, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Pallid Witch Flesh and Magos Purple, we're gonna paint the contents of his backpack. We're gonna start off with some Gullum and Flesh all over the big intestines that's hooked up from the bottom of the sack on the side, and for the mess of whatever that is. And don't forget the little uh, intestinal thing that's hanging off the side. And once that is done, we will take Watered Down Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it to all the solid body pieces that are coming out of this backpack. And once that is dry, we're then going to take Pallid Witch Flesh and we're going to dry brush all of these all that we just did, the intestines, the bodies, and the flesh stuff. And now we're just going to apply some watered down Gullum and Flesh on all the parts that we painted Gullum and Flesh before, and then we're going to take watered down Skeleton Horde Contrast and we're going to apply it all over the parts that had Skeleton Horde Contrast before. And in combination with the dry brushing, it's going to make some really good, really detailed effects. It's going to look very clean, clear, and detailed. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of Magos Purple onto the organs and other stuff just to add some more color and as well as the corpses as well, the parts that are close to the mesh of, or I don't know what the crap that is. But. And then with Steel Legion Drap, Agrax Earthshade, and Bane Blade Brown, we're going to paint two things, a bunch of bones and the parchments on his staff. So we're going to start off with a layer of Steel Legion Drap for the parchment that is hanging from his staff, as well as the skulls that are in the uh, attached to the bodies in the soup thingy, as well as the skeletal figure of his victim. And once that is done, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and apply it all over these bones and the paper. And once that is done, we're going to go back with Steel Legion Drab and we're going to, for the paper, we're going to draw straight lines along the edges and like straight lines across in the center of the papers. And as far as the bodies, we're going to dry brush the victim's body, this, with Steel Legion Drab. And we're also going to highlight and draw lines on the skeletal skulls in the soup. And then we will do the same thing again with Baneblade Brown as our highlight. We will do a lighter dry brush on the raised areas for the victim's bones, and we will paint the upper raised areas of each of the skulls on, in the soup, and the very edges, and a few lines inside the paper. And now with Xandry Dust and Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're going to paint the skulls that are hanging from his staff, as well as like some animal skulls that are along the staff. With Xandry Dust, we're going to use as our base layer. And once that dries, we're going to take Water Down Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it all over to these skulls. And once that dries, we're going to apply Xandry Dust on the highlighted raised areas, like 90-95% of these skulls will be highlighted again. And then we'll apply another layer of Skeleton Horde Contrast, and then we will do a further highlight again. I wanted these skulls to look different than the ones in the soup and of the victim on the ground. So they're distinct, they're eye-catching. And we're just going to be simple. With Rhinox Hide, we're going to paint the leather straps things that are on his staff holding the skulls. Simple. And 
Now with Drakenhof Nightshade, we're just going, and Pallet Witch Flesh, we're just going to paint the little Nurgling. We're start off with a base layer of Drakenhof Nightshade. And once that dries, we're going to dry brush Pallet Witch Flesh all over his body, the raised areas. And then once that's dry, we're going to apply another layer of Drakenhof Nightshade. And now with Bestigore Flesh, Fugan Orange, and Dawnstone, we're going to paint uh, the boils on the guy and his eye. So we're going to start off with a layer of Bestigore Flesh on all his little boils. And once they dry, we'll apply a dot of Fugan Orange on each of them. And once they dry, we're going to take Vestigore Flesh and apply a dot on each of the boils. And then we're going to take Dawnstone and just use that as a base color and fill out his eye. Now with Mornfang Brown, Nuln Oil, and XV88, I'm going to paint the robe on the victim. I'm going to start off with a base layer of Mornfang Brown with the finest camera angles. And then we're going to apply Nuln Oil onto the entirety of his robe. And then with that, when that's done, we're going to dry brush Mornfang Brown all over his robe and stuff. We want to be careful not to touch his, uh, whatchamacallit, his bones. And then once that's done, we're then going to take XV88 and we're going to dry brush again, focusing on the more raised areas, or the more pronounced areas. And once that is done, we're going to take pure XV88, little water down, and with a fine brush, highlight the edges of his robe, the folds more specifically, wherever there's an edge of a robe or a fold, that's pretty much what we're going to highlight. And then I pretty much do the exact same thing of all that to this little sack thing that's hanging off the back. Now with Pallid Witch Flesh, Gullum and Flesh, and Magos Purple, we're going to paint the guts of the guy that's coming out, as well as the little mushrooms. So we're going to start with the base layer of Pallid Witch Flesh. And then we're going to apply two layers of Gullum and Flesh on the mushrooms, and one layer of Gullum and Flesh all over the guts. And then we're going to apply a layer of Magos Purple onto the guts, and none onto the mushrooms. And now with Cadian Flesh Tone and Golem and Contrast Paint, we're going to paint the guy's face, the victim's face. We're going to start with a base layer of Cadian Flesh Tone. Then we're going to apply some watered down Golem and Flesh all over his face and head. And then once that's done, we're going to dry brush Cadian Flesh Tone onto him to highlight and pick out the features. And then I'm going to take pure Cadian Flesh Tone with a fine brush and I'm going to pick out like his nose, the, his lines on his face and head and stuff to make him pop. I don't show this, but later I go back with a little bit of Goldman Flesh and then just apply it like dots into the holes or recesses and his eyes as well, just to add more uh, depth and color into it. Now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to varnish pretty much everything individually before assembly. And now, once all the things have been varnished, we're going to move on to metallics with lead belcha, known oil, riser rust, and this oxide color. We're going to paint all his metals. We're going to start off with lead belcha on all the blades of his knives, as well as the chains on his body and the metal bracers on the box thing. And then we'll apply known oil all over these. And then once that's done, I'm going to take riser rust and we'll apply it where the metal is torn, the metal is ripped, wide stretches of just flat metal, uh, where the nails go in. Just have fun with it. And then we're going to apply the oxide color on anywhere that we put too much of the rust color on, and random dots here and there. 
and then with Rhinox hide, we're going to apply it to all the handles of his knives. And once that's done, what we're going to do is now we're going to do a somewhat final assembly. We're going to glue him onto the base as well as the uh, victim and his little hand. I recommend actually gluing his right hand first and then applying him onto the base and then apply gluing the victim to him. I then proceed to glue the rest of the model together. The little nurgling to the giant box and then eventually those little knives. Those little knives, there's no actual spot I can think for them are pre-made so just glue them randomly all over the box. Now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, Lead Belcha, Golem and Flesh, and Blood for the Blood God, we're going to put on some finishing touches. Now with the Ultra Matte, we're going to apply this to wherever the super glue may have poured out a little bit and created a shine, and this will just dull it back down and look like nothing, and make it look like nothing. And then with the Lead Belcha, the knives are hanging on hooks, I didn't notice that until now, and we're going to use this to apply to make the middle hooks apparent. And then with the Golem and Flesh, we're going to apply this onto his blades. It's going to look like dried blood. And then with Blood for the Blood God, we're going to have fun and we're going to apply it wherever we want. We're going to apply it into the backpack, around the ripped parts of the bodies, uh, parts of his flesh that are open, um, part of the victim. Oh, just have fun with it. Now with the Nurgle's Rot and yellow ink, we mix it until it's a bright yellow. And we're going to apply this all over the base, we're going to apply this into the mouth of the victim, into the bottle he's having, uh, parts of the, uh, uh, the backpack he's wearing, and we're also going to apply dots of this onto each of these like warts he has all throughout his body, the green ones with Plague Bearer's Flesh and Death Horde Force that we painted earlier. And then with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, we're going to apply this to everywhere where we think it could be wet. The guy's guts hanging out, the guts in the backpack, various spots of the bodies, all the maggots, and more specifically all the leeches, the giant leeches, they need to shine, they need to look wet and shiny, and the big intestines that is coming out of the backpack and plugged into him. And he is done. I went back and fixed up a few more details here and there, but nothing worth uh, really mentioning, just fixing some stuff. But overall, this kit is interesting. There is a lot of detail and a lot of character in this model, and it is actually, there's so much detail and so much character that it's kind of overwhelming in some areas. Like, I have to keep coming back and, oh, there's also this detail, and oh, there's also this, and there's also that, and my goodness, it's just, there's so much. Uh, it's a little overwhelming. This took a little bit longer than I would have liked, but hmm. um, as far as it goes, like this is a very good model, and there's a lot to show on it. But I don't feel I did the best. His staff is a little meh. I wanted his skulls that were hanging on his staff and the skulls that were elsewhere in the bones to be visually different, so they'd be strikingly different. Hmm. As far as my work. I feel like it can only be like a 7 out of 10. There's some things I did very well, like his flesh, like Lefestus Leechlord himself, was really good. His staff kind of brings it down, and the Nurgling, I couldn't really do his face right, or his eye. So some stuff brings it down, I, this could have been an 8 or a 9, an 8 maybe if the staff got better. The leeches were pretty good. Uh, yeah. And it's overall it's a good attempt, it's a good try, the quality is good. Uh, well, the only other thing is I didn't really realize how far out his staff would go, so if I would have known that a bit beforehand, I would have centered him a little bit more to the left, so the staff wouldn't be just hanging out the entire model. Yeah. So apart from that, uh, I'm making good headway on my Christmas haul. Uh, not that much Nurgle left. Alright, like the video if you like the video, comment if you want to comment, uh, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, share it where you want to share it, and I will see you soon. Bye.